Hey everybody and welcome back to Hoffman Reproductions. Thank you all again for tuning in with us today. Taking a little break this time around from our series on flintlock shooting. Uh, weather hasn't been very nice for getting out in the woods so doing this segment of the video inside. Um, this is in response to a question that a subscriber posted a while back about is it possible to make uh, percussion caps, homemade percussion caps. And indeed it is. It's somewhat of a tedious, boring process, but it can indeed be done and add yet another layer of self-sufficiency to black powder enthusiasts. So you do need to get a few things if you're going to do this. Uh, first thing you need to get is a little tool similar to this for cutting out the percussion caps. The company that made this particular model. I bought this probably oh, 20, 25 years ago. They're no longer in business, but a company that is producing one that is similar to this uh, is a company, you can find it on the internet at 22lrreloader.com and they make this little die for cutting out the percussion caps that I'll demonstrate here. It retails for $49.95 and uh, of course it's an investment and once you get it you're off to the races you really don't need a whole lot more but you will need that uh, some scrap aluminum pop can pieces any kind of work your preferred drink <laughs> um, you will need some paper roll toy caps get these at uh, most places that sell cap guns a little harder to find nowadays than when I was a kid, but you can find them online, of course. They're very cheap. A uh, hammer, small wooden stick with a rounded end for pushing the cut caps down in the percussion caps shells that we're going to make, and a paper punch. Um, as far as the effectiveness of these caps when you're shooting them, I'd say you can expect about 95% uh, fire rate. Occasionally you will get a misfire but it's fairly rare as I'll demonstrate later on in our video I actually we're gonna go out on the range and fire a few live rounds but I'd say about 95% efficiency on the effectiveness of these um, and even with commercial caps I occasionally have gotten misfires and uh, you can use these in all standard number 11 size nipples on your rifles, uh, muskets, Civil War muskets, obviously these aren't going to fit your Adelec there, but these will also fit on black powder cap and ball revolvers. I had an 1860 Army Colt revolver that I used to make these for and use and work very well. So before we head down to the shooting range, I'll go ahead and demonstrate quickly here how to go about making these. So this little cutter head comes out of this die. There's a little slot right here with the colored side facing up. piece of the aluminum strip from our pop can goes in there. Stick the cutter head in there. Take your hammer, a couple of swats. And out pops our little percussion cap shell. You can use real thin brass or copper if you want a little more period correct look, but this is the cheapest way to do it. Of course if you get scrap cans it won't cost you anything. So once you have those you're going to take a paper punch and they make different sizes. Some guys um, like different heads. Some prefer they say there's a cutter that you can get that punches out a little star and that works really good in these. This is the one that I have. Ooh, my little holder just fell off there. But uh, it's just a round cutter. So you just center it right over the cap, punch it out. Didn't quite punch out all the way. There we got them. And as close as you can to the center. And you're gonna do this three times for each cap. 
that's what the directions, the old directions that I recall said to use three. Uh, trying to cut out more, say four or five, and jam them in there, it doesn't work. It doesn't produce a hotter cap. It will just clog up your nipple with paper and they won't all ignite. So once you have that done, and you may want to hold this with a little set of pliers because jamming these around in there, these little toy caps are somewhat sensitive. They can pop on you, which can give you a little burn. So I just lick the end of that stick, holding it off the area where the priming is. Okay, so I've got the one pushed down in there. You're going to repeat that with the two other sections that we cut out for a grand total of three. And some people claim that, uh, you know, this is so tedious, why bother doing it? Uh, again, yes, it is tedious, but percussion caps kind of, uh, sometimes they're easy to get, they kind of fluctuate. Sometimes they're easy to get, readily available, other times not. Sometimes they're cheap, sometimes they're not, and it kind of ebbs and flows with what's going on in the world and the shooting and reloading world. So again, this is just another facet. If you want to be more self-sufficient in black powder shooting sports, this is another avenue you can try. And you'd be surprised how many of these, once you kind of get a feel for it, you can knock out in an evening. It's a kind of a fun little project to do in the cold winter months. If you sit down and do, you know, a couple dozen per night, you can come up with a pretty good little load. Uh, they do have a bit of a shelf life. You don't want to make them up years in advance. Some of the ones that uh, we're going to go here and fire I've had for probably 10 or 15 years and that's kind of outdated so they're going to lose some of their potency. Best too if you want to make them to use makeup however many you want maybe a little extra use them and then make them as you need them so that the uh, caps stay good and hot and don't deteriorate so uh, we'll conclude for now and we'll head on down to the shooting range and we'll give a few of these homemade caps a test we're down here at the range with one of my few percussion guns this is a little 45 caliber Kentucky rifle that was made by CVA and this is the very first muzzleloader that I ever bought when I believe I was around 13 years old. So uh, we're going to go ahead and give our homemade percussion caps a try on this rifle. I'm shooting 55 grains of 2F homemade black powder, pillow ticking patch, and a .443 round ball. So we got a target out at about 30 yards. We'll see what happens. Okay, that was pretty good, no hesitation at all. Gun went right off, we'll load up for shot number two. Okay, number two. No problem. Okay, number three. Okay, number three fell off. Let me go for number four. only works if the cap's actually on the gun.
Alright, so just in case you were wondering if uh, the homemade percussion caps had any result on accuracy one way or another, again I was shooting at about 30 yards and the three shots there on the blue X were the ones that I fired today. The large holes were from a musket that I test fired the other day. And uh, for me that's pretty good. That's about a three and a half inch group. And um, given the fact I'm a little bit weak and shaky because my children shared their uh, strep throat with me there last week so I'm a little bit weak and shaky but I am recovering anyhow uh, accuracy accuracy is pretty good and I took a shot at a 50 yard target our swinging board that's up there that's about six inches by eight and managed to hit it too so accuracy is pretty good with these uh, homemade percussion caps okay so we fired six rounds out of this rifle I fired a few of them off camera just for fun at a long range target to see how it would do and to be fair I did get a misfire on one of those and I will say that these particular homemade caps that I made here they're probably 15 years old I just haven't gotten this rifle out in that amount of time to shoot so the longer they set it seems the less effective they are so if you do make them it's not a bad idea to shoot them up within a year or two of making because they do seem to diminish the longer they are on the shelf as it were so make sure you use fresh caps if you want consistent ignition but uh, generally pretty good no delays they were all going off except for the one there and uh, I would say for plinking, target shooting, reenacting would be a great choice. Um, if you were on, you know, the big game hunt of a lifetime, you might want to go with the latest and greatest commercially made percussion cap. But uh, casting your own round balls, cutting your own patching, uh, making your own black powder, and stepping it up a notch, making your own percussion caps, that's about as self-sufficient of a uh, avenue as you can go when it comes to traditional black powder shooting and you can uh, remove yourself from uh, a lot of these things that are in somewhat of uh, uproar right now within the shooting community and uh, do it yourself. So uh, that's going to conclude this video here today. Thank you all for tuning in and subscribing. We really appreciate it and please have a very Merry Christmas. Until next time, take care.